Hello, this is Alison from Britsent. Today I'm going to read another fairy story from the Grimm's brothers. This one is called Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel Hard by a great forest dwelt a poor woodcutter with his wife and his two children. The boy was called Hansel and the girl Gretel. He had little to bite and to break, and once when great scarcity fell on the land, he could no longer procure daily bread. Now when he thought this over by night in his bed and tossed about in his anxiety, he groaned and said to his wife, What is to become of us? How are we to feed our poor children when we no longer have anything even for ourselves? I'll tell you what, husband answered the woman. Early tomorrow morning, we will take the children out into the forest to where it is the thickest. There we will light a fire for them and give each of them one piece of bread more. And then we will go to our work and leave them alone. They will not find the way home again and we shall be rid of them. No, wife, said the man. I will not do that. How can I bear to leave my children alone in the forest? The wild animals would soon come and tear them to pieces. Oh, thou fool, said she. Then we must all four die of hunger. Thou mayst as well plane the planks for our coffins. And she left him no peace until he consented. But I feel very sorry for the poor children all the same, said the man. The two children had also not been able to sleep for hunger and had heard what their stepmother had said to their father. Gretel wept bitter tears, and said to Hansel, Now all is over with us. Be quiet, Gretel, said Hansel. Do not distress thyself. I will soon find a way to help us. And when the old folks had fallen asleep, he got up, put on his little coat, opened the door below, and crept outside. The moon shone brightly and the white pebbles, which lay in front of the house, glittered like real silver pennies. Hansel stooped and put as many of them in the little pocket of his coat as he could possibly get in. Then he went back and said to Gretel, Be comforted, dear little sister, and sleep in peace. God will not forsake us. And he lay down again in his bed. When day dawned, but before the sun had risen, The woman came and awoke the two children, saying, Get up, you sluggards. We are going into the forest to fetch wood. She gave each a little piece of bread and said, There is something for your dinner, but do not eat it up before then, for you will get nothing else. Gretel took the bread under her apron, as Hansel had the stones in his pocket. Then they all set out together on the way to the forest. When they had walked a short time, Hansel stood still and peeped back at the house and did so again and again. His father said, Hansel, what art thou looking at there and staying behind for? Mind what thou art about and do not forget how to use thy legs. Ah, father, said Hansel, I am looking at my little white cat, which is sitting up on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me. The wife said, Fool? That is not thy little cat, that is the morning sun, which is shining on the chimneys. Hansel, however, had not been looking back at the cat, but had been constantly throwing one of the white pebble stones out of his pocket on the road. When they had reached the middle of the forest, the father said, Now, children, pile up some wood, and I will light a fire, that you may not be cold. Hansel and Gretel gathered brushwood together, as high as a little hill. The brushwood was lighted, and when the flames were burning very high, the woman said, Now, children, lay yourselves down by the fire and rest. We will go into the forest and cut some wood. When we have done, we will come back and fetch you away. Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire, and when noon came, each ate a little piece of bread, and as they heard the strokes of the wood axe, They believed that their father was near. It was not, however, the axe. It was a branch, 
which she had fastened to a withered tree, which the wind was blowing backwards and forwards. And as they had been sitting such a long time, their eyes shut with fatigue, and they fell fast asleep. When at last they awoke, it was already dark night. Gretel began to cry and said, How are we going to get out of the forest now? But Hansel comforted her and said, Just wait a little until the moon has risen, and then we will soon find the way. And when the full moon had risen, Hansel took his little sister by the hand and followed the pebbles, which shone like newly coined silver pieces, and showed them the way. They walked the whole night long, and by break of day came once more to their father's house. They knocked at the door, and when the woman opened it and saw it was Hansel and Gretel, she said, You naughty children, why have you slept so long in the forest? We thought you were never coming back at all. Their father, however, rejoiced, for it had cut him to the heart to leave them behind alone. Not long afterwards, there was once more great scarcity in all parts, and the children heard their mother saying at night to their father, Everything is eaten again, we have one half loaf left, and after that there is an end. The children must go. We will take them further into the wood so that they will not find their way out again. There is no other means of saving ourselves. The man's heart was heavy, and he thought, It would be better for thee to share the last mouthful with thy children. The woman, however, would listen to nothing that he had to say, but scolded and reproached him. He who says A, must say B likewise, and as he had yielded the first time, he had to do so a second time also. The children were, however, still awake, and had heard the conversation. When the old folks were asleep, Hansel again got up, and wanted to go out and pick pebbles, as he had done before, but the woman had locked the door, and Hansel could not get out. Nevertheless, he comforted his little sister and said, Do not cry, Gretel. Go to sleep quietly. The good God will help us. Early in the morning came the woman and took the children out of their beds. Their bit of bread was given to them, but it was still smaller than the time before. On the way into the forest, Hansel crumbled his in his pocket and often stood still and threw a morsel on the ground. Hansel, why dost thou stop and look round? said the father. Go on. I am looking back at my little pigeon which is sitting on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me, answered Hansel. Simpleton, said the woman. That is not thy little pigeon. That is the morning sun that is shining on the chimney. Hansel, however, little by little, threw all the crumbs on the path. The woman led the children still deeper into the forest, where they had never in their lives been before. Then a great fire was again made, and the mother said, Just sit there, you children, and when you are tired, you may sleep a little. We are going into the forest to cut wood. And in the evening, when we are done, we will come and fetch you away. When it was noon, Gretel shared her piece of bread with Hansel, who had scattered his by the way. Then they fell asleep, and evening came and went, but no one came to the poor children. They did not awake until it was dark night, and Hansel comforted his little sister and said, Just wait, Gretel, until the moon rises, and then. We shall see the crumbs of bread which I have strewn about. They will show us our way home again. When the moon came, they set out, but they found no crumbs, for the many thousands of birds which fly about in the woods and fields had picked them all up. Hansel said to Gretel, We shall soon find a way, but they did not find it. They walked the whole night, and all the next day too, from morning till evening. But they did not get out of the forest, and were very hungry, for they had nothing to eat but two or three berries which grew on the ground. 
and as they were so weary that their legs would carry them no longer, they lay down beneath the tree and fell asleep. It was now three mornings since they had left their father's house. They began to walk again, but they always got deeper into the forest, and if help did not come soon, they must die of hunger and weariness. When it was midday, they saw a beautiful snow-white bird sitting on a bough, which sang so delightfully that they stood still and listened to it. And when it had finished its song, it spread its wings and flew away before them, and they followed it until they reached a little house, on the roof of which it alighted. And when they came quite up to the little house, they saw that it was built of bread and covered with cakes, but that the windows were of clear sugar. We will set to work on that, said Hansel, and have a good meal. I will eat a bit of the roof, and thou, Gretel, canst eat some of the window. It will taste sweet. Hansel reached up above and broke off a little of the roof to try how it tasted, and Gretel leaned against the window and nibbled at the panes. Then a soft voice cried from the room, Nibble, nibble, nor who is nibbling at my house? The children answered, The wind, the wind, the heaven-born wind, and went on eating without disturbing themselves. Hansel, who thought the roof tasted very nice, tore down a great piece of it, and Gretel pushed out the whole of one round window pane, sat down, and enjoyed herself with it. Suddenly, the door opened, and a very, very old woman, who supported herself on crutches, came creeping out. Hansel and Gretel were so terribly frightened that they let fall what they had in their hands. The old woman, however, nodded her head and said, Oh, you dear children, who has brought you here? Do come in and stay with me. No harm shall happen to you. She took them both by the hand and led them into her little house. Then good food was set before them, milk and pancakes, with sugar, apples and nuts. Afterwards, two pretty little beds were covered with clean white linen, and Hansel and Gretel lay down in them and thought they were in heaven. The old woman had only pretended to be so kind. She was, in reality, a wicked witch who lay in wait for children and had only built the little house of bread in order to entice them there. When a child fell into her power, she killed it, cooked it and ate it. And that was a feast day with her. Witches have red eyes and cannot see far but they have a keen scent like the beasts and are aware when human beings draw near. When Hansel and Gretel came into her neighbourhood, she laughed maliciously and said mockingly, Ah, oh, I have them. They shall not escape me again. Early in the morning, before the children were awake, she was already up, and when she saw both of them sleeping and looking so pretty, with their plump red cheeks, she muttered to herself, that will be a dainty mouthful. Then she seized Hansel with her shriveled hand and carried him into a little stable and shut him in with a grated door. He might scream as he liked, that was of no use. Then she went to Gretel and shook her till she awoke and cried, Get up, lazy thing! Fetch some water and cook something good for thy brother. He's in the stable outside and is to be made fat. When he is fat, I will eat him. Gretel began to weep bitterly, but it was all in vain. She was forced to do what the wicked witch ordered her. And now the best food was cooked for poor Hansel, but Gretel got nothing but crab shells. Every morning, the woman crept to the little stable and cried, Hansel, stretch out thy finger, that I may feel if thou wilt soon be fat. Hansel, however, stretched out a little bone to her, and the old woman, who had dim eyes, could not see it, and thought it was Hansel's finger, 
and was astonished that there was no way of fattening him. When four weeks had gone by, and Hansel still continued thin, she was seized with impatience and would not wait any longer. Hola, Gretel, she cried to the girl. Be active and bring some water. Let Hansel be fat or lean. Tomorrow I will kill him and cook him. Ah, how the poor little sister did lament when she had to fetch the water and how her tears did flow down over her cheeks. Dear God, do help us, she cried. If the wild beasts in the forest had but devoured us, we should at any rate have died together. Just keep thy noise to thyself, said the old woman. All that won't help thee at all. Early in the morning, Gretel had to go out and hang up the cauldron with the water and light the fire. We will bake first, said the old woman. I have already heated the oven and kneaded the dough. She pushed poor Gretel out to the oven, from which flames of fire were already darting. Creep in, said the witch, and see if it is properly heated, so that we can shut the bread in. And when once Gretel was inside, she intended to shut the oven and let her bake in it, and then she would eat her too. But Gretel saw what she had in mind and said, I do not know how I am to do it. How do you get in? Silly goose, said the old woman. The door is big enough. Just look. I can get in myself. And she crept up and thrust her head into the oven. Then Gretel gave her a push that drove her far into it and shut the iron door and fastened the bolt. Oh. Then she began to howl quite horribly, but Gretel ran away, and the godless witch was miserably burnt to death. Gretel, however, ran like lightning to Hansel, opened his little stable and cried, Hansel, we are saved, the old witch is dead. Then Hansel sprang out like a bird from its cage when the door is opened for it. How they did rejoice and embrace each other, and dance about and kiss each other. And as they had no longer any need to fear her, they went into the witch's house, and in every corner there stood chests full of pearls and jewels. These are far better than pebbles, said Hansel, and thrust into his pockets whatever could be got in. And Gretel said, I too will take something home with me, and filled her pinafore full. But now, we will go away, said Hansel, that we may get out of the witch's forest. When they had walked for about two hours, they came to a great piece of water. We cannot get over, said Hansel. I see no footplank and no bridge. And no boat crosses either, answered Gretel. But a white duck is swimming there. If I ask her, she will help us over. Then she cried, Little duck, little duck, dost thou see? Hansel and Gretel are waiting for thee. There's never a plank or bridge in sight. Take us across on thy back so white. The duck came to them, and Hansel seated himself on its back, and told his sister to sit by him. No, replied Gretel, that will be too heavy for the little duck. She shall take us across one after the other. The good little duck did so. And when they were once safely across, and had walked for a short time, the forest seemed to be more and more familiar to them, and at length they saw from afar their father's house. Then they began to run, rushed into the parlour, and threw themselves into their father's arms. The man had not known one happy hour since he had left the children in the forest. The woman, however, was dead. Gretel emptied her pinafore until pearls and precious stones ran about the room, and Hansel threw one handful after another out of his pocket to add to them. Then all anxiety was at an end, and they lived together in perfect happiness. My tale is done. There runs a mouse. Whosoever catches it may make himself a big fur cap out of it. 
And that is the end of Hansel and Gretel. I hope you enjoyed it. The Golden Goose from Grimm's Fairy Tales Narrated by Marcus from Britsent There was a man who had three sons, the youngest of whom was called Dumbling, and was despised, mocked, and put down on every occasion. It happened that the eldest wanted to go into the forest to hew wood, and before he went, his mother gave him a beautiful sweet cake and a bottle of wine in order that he might not suffer from hunger or thirst. When he entered the forest, there met him a little grey-haired old man who bade him good day and said, Do give me a piece of cake out of your pocket, and let me have a draught of your wine. I am so hungry and thirsty. But the prudent youth answered, If I give you my cake and wine, I shall have none for myself. Be off with you. And he left the little man standing and went on. But when he began to hew down a tree, It was not long before he made a full stroke, and the axe cut him in the arm so that he had to go home and have it bound up. And this was the little grey man's doing. After this, the second son went into the forest, and his mother gave him, like the eldest, a cake and a bottle of wine. The little old grey man met him likewise, and asked him for a piece of cake and a drink of wine, but the second son too said with much reason, What I give you will be taken away from myself. Be off. And he left the little man standing and went on. His punishment, however, was not delayed. When he had made a few strokes at the tree, he struck himself in the leg, so that he had to be carried home. Then Dumling said, Father, do let me go and cut wood. The father answered, Your brothers have hurt themselves with it. Leave it alone. You do not understand anything about it. But the Dumbling begged so long that at last he said, Just go then. You will get wiser by hurting yourself. His mother gave him a cake made with water and baked in the cinders and with a bottle of sour beer. When he came to the forest, the little old grey man met him likewise and greeting him said, Give me a piece of cake and a drink out of your bottle. I am so hungry and thirsty. Dumbling answered, I have only cinder cake and sour beer. If that pleases you, we will sit down and eat. So they sat down. And when Dumbling poured out his cinder cake, it was a fine sweet cake, and the sour beer had become good wine. So they ate and drank, and after that the little man said, Since you have a good heart and are willing to divide what you have, I will give you good luck. There stands an old tree. Cut it down and you will find something at the roots. Then the little man took leave of him. Dumbling went and cut down the tree, and when it fell there was a goose sitting in the roots with feathers of pure gold. He lifted her up and, taking her with him, went to an inn where he thought he would stay the night. Now the host had three daughters, who saw the goose and were curious to know what such a wonderful bird might be, and would have liked to have one of its golden feathers. The eldest thought, I shall soon find an opportunity of pulling out a feather. And, as soon as Dumbling had gone out, she seized the goose by the wing, put her finger and hand remained sticking fast to it. The second came soon afterwards, thinking only of how she might get a feather for herself but she had scarcely touched her sister than she was held fast. And at last the third also came with the like intent, and the others screamed out, Keep away for goodness sake! Keep away! But she did not understand why she was to keep away. The others are there, she thought. I may as well be there too, and ran to them. But as soon as she had touched her sister, she remained sticking fast to her, so they had to spend the night with the goose. 
The next morning, Dumbling took the goose under his arm and set out, without troubling himself about the three girls who were hanging on to it. They were obliged to run after him continually, now left, now right, just as he was inclined to go. In the middle of the fields, the parson met them, and when he saw the procession, he said, For shame, you good-for-nothing girls! Why are you running across the fields after this young man? Is that seemly? At the same time, he seized the youngest by the hand in order to pull her away. But, as soon as he touched her, he likewise stuck fast and was himself obliged to run behind. Before long, the sexton came by and saw his master, the parson, running behind three girls. He was astonished at this and called out, Hi, your reverence. Wither away so quickly. Do not forget that we have a christening today. And running after him, he took him by the sleeve, but was also held fast to it. Whilst the five were trotting thus one behind the other, two labourers came with their hoes from the fields. The parson called out to them and begged that they would set him and the sexton free. But they had scarcely touched the sexton when they were held fast, and now there were seven of them running behind Dumbling and the goose. Soon afterwards, he came to a city where a king ruled, who had a daughter who was so serious that no one could make her laugh. So he had to put forth a decree that whoever so should be able to make her laugh should marry her. When Dumbling heard this, he went with his goose and all her train before the king's daughter. And as soon as she saw the seven people running on and on, one behind the other, she began to laugh quite loudly, as if she would never leave off. Thereupon, Dumbling asked to have her for his wife, and the wedding was celebrated. After the king's death, Dumbling inherited the kingdom and lived a long time contentedly with his wife.